My name is Andreas Polreis. I am a clinician researcher at the Department of Ophthalmology at the Medical University of Vienna. So Yosemite and Ryan were two large uh, parallel randomized double mask phase three studies that assessed efficacy, safety, and durability of risimab compared to aflibrocep in treatment naive and previously anti-VEGF treated diabetic patients with a center involving diabetic macular edema. Patients were randomized equally into one of three treatment arms, risimab six milligram given every eight weeks after loading dose of six monthly injections, Second group was furosemab, six milligram treat and extend after um, a loading dose of four monthly furosemab injections. And the comparator arm was a fluorosep, two milligram given every eight weeks after loading dose of five monthly injections, which was and is the global label. So ferisimab met its primary endpoint of being non-inferior to a flibrocept regarding best corrected visual acuity change from baseline at year one. The one-year vision gains that were observed with ferisimab both in the Q8 weak arm and in the treat and extend arm up to Q16 were maintained through the second year and remained comparable with flibrocept given every eight weeks. The ferisimab treated eyes showed improved anatomic outcomes in terms of reductions in CST as well as resolution in, of interretinal fluid compared to a flibrocept over the study period of two years. The ferisimab treated and extend thumb specifically addressed durability. And uh, what was found was that it's week 96, so at the end of the study, more than 60% of patients achieved the Q16 week dosing and almost 80% achieved the Q12 week dosing or longer. Regarding safety, Ferisimab was shown to be well tolerated throughout the study, showed an acceptable safety profile, which was comparable to a fluorocept. Yeah, so in our post-talk analysis, we analyzed whether targeting NG2 together with VEGFA using furosemab leads to faster anatomical improvements in a time-to-event analysis of the pooled Yosemite and Ryan data. What we found was that the uh, first absence of DME, which was defined as a central subfield thickness of less than 325 micrometers, and with a more stringent criterion of less than 280 micrometers, was reached faster and with fewer injections in the furosemab treated patients compared to the aflibrocept control group. When looking, for instance, at the cumulative incidence of when 50% of patients reached a CST of less than 280 micrometers, we found that this was reached four months earlier in the furosemab treated eyes. Similarly, absence of interretinal fluid in the central subfield one millimeter was also achieved faster and with fewer injections with ferisimab compared to a flibrocept. And the 50th percentile was reached in this case nine months earlier in ferisimab treated eyes compared to a flibrocept. So what these data indicate is that early treatment with ferisimab may lead to improved anatomic outcomes, which are beyond current anti-VEGF therapies. Mm -hmm.